Well, let's bring in legal analyst Malusi Krulu to weigh in on this case and also the way forward. Malusi, good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the SABC at this hour. Good afternoon, Giselle, and thank you for inviting me as well. So we're going to just unpack two cases. Let's start off with um, the second appearance of five of the seven men linked to the murder of AKA and Tibbs. The state has now added further charges of money laundering against the accused. And um, initially, you know, we know that they face 10 counts um, initially. And, and I just wanted to get your reaction to this, how it all fits in. Yes, um, they've added the money laundering uh, charges because Remember that accused number four, allegedly, he's the one that was the coordinator in terms of payments, receiving a large amount of money, uh, allegedly 800,000 rand. So what they are saying is that at that point, when he received that money and he distributed that money amongst the others, that was money laundering. Maybe just to paint a picture, money laundering is an illegal process of making a large amount of money, making it to appear as if it was obtained in a legal manner. So by that doing that for you doing it for illegal activities. So basically that's what money laundering is about. But you see, thank you for painting that picture and for setting the context. Perhaps as we look at the bail application considerations, you could speak to that because the initial court appearance was primarily procedural and uh, obviously set the, appear, the appearance, um, set the stage for the upcoming legal proceedings. The state now firmly opposing bail, highlighting the gravity of the charges laid against them. What do you think their prospects are at this point? Also, as we look at the legal efforts to extradite the additional suspects from Eswatini, that being ongoing. Okay. Okay, I'll start with the bail application. Uh, basically, this is a Schedule 6 bail application where the accused who are applying for bail must prove that there are exceptional circumstances uh, on the basis of probabilities that warrant that they must be released on bail. However, the state is obviously uh, opposing based on the fact that it's a serious matter, it's a premeditated matter based on other um, charges as well. So the state is opposing bail application. And amongst other things, I think we've learned uh, from other high profile cases like uh, Dr. Nandi Park, where they will look at whether the accused are a flight risk, they look at whether the accused will affect uh, the investigation of the case or interfere with the witnesses. So there are many things that we will look at. So I can't wait for the bail to start because we might also get to hear how they are all linked the only thing, Lizelle, which I've mentioned before, there's that outstanding issue of knowing whether who was the person who sent them. So I think that is missing. But as for the, uh, the, the accused that I the Swati, we are only waiting for the extradition process to be finalized because we do have an extradition agreement with Swati, but there are still some documents that need to be submitted. So once that is done, they will join in the others. And mm. because the bail is on the 14th, possibly if it's done on the 12th, the expectation will come to South Africa before then. Because, Melusi, yes, as you alluded to, some of the view, including um, Keenan's father, Tony Forbes, noting the alleged mastermind behind the murders still remains at large. And so questions about how far that process um, also comes to the fore. And just looking at the legal hur hurdles that, you know, needs to be overcoming this case, the verification of residential addresses, consolidation of charges at large. From your vantage point, is the road to, to this trial looking to be one that's going to be lengthy and challenging? What are your concerns at this point as well? Okay, I think it's, it, it's obviously a high profile case. That's the first thing. When the case is high pro, it's a high profile, the, the states will ensure that they get all the witnesses that they need to get. Maybe there'll be a large number of witnesses. So we, we are expecting that, but um, like I said, I think once there's no arrest of the person who sent the accused, we're going to have a, a, a case that is almost like the sense of Mayor case where only the people who are sent allegedly to kill the deceased are arrested. However, I am interested in whether the, the police follow all the procedures in their investigation uh, where the constitutional rights of the accused properly, you know, given to them because you don't want to find, again, another sense of your situation where there might be confessions, but the confessions were not done in a proper way. Already in a, a certain, 
there's an issue of the four cell phones that they was confiscate. So I don't know whether that should be done procedurally in the right way. So I think the police must just get their ducks in order if indeed these are mm. the right accused, but they must be careful not to flout, flout their constitutional rights because if they do that, then the accused will obviously have to be acquitted. But it's still early for that reason. We're just uh, looking at the future, but the pay will give us more uh, clarity yes. where this case is going. Yes, it is a high-profile case. There's a spotlight on the SAPS. There's a spotlight on the judiciary at large. It's highlighted issues of violence, gun control in the country. And as that case unfolds, um, you know, we're obviously looking at whether justice will be served to the victims, their families. Also looking at broader discussions on public safety and the rule of law. What are you observing on that front just before we move to that other case quickly? Okay. Um, I, I like the fact that you've brought the fact that um, there must be justice for the family of uh, the deceased, which is AKA, may his soul rest in peace. I think that is very important. It, it, it makes us to believe in the justice system, but at the same time, hopefully the, the justice for the accused will also be balanced in a sense that there must be the right accused. If not, obviously they must be acquitted. But from a public safety point of view, I, I'm, I'm of the view that, you know, when it comes to assassinations, especially in case and there needs to be more specialized department at SAPS and the, uh, 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 and the Department of Justice and, and, and a NPA. I think I, I read or heard someone uh, from some official stating that there might, that there might be a decision to have a specialized court for such cases because they are an increase, especially in case and so for public safety, as you've mentioned, I think there's a concern that needs to be looked at. But you see, just as we turn our attention to another case or two more cases that's come to the fore, I want you to unpack just very quickly the importance of Shlope, Judge Shlope and um, Gola Mutata's impeachment vote for um, the judicial accountability at large, um, the move by the president, of course. And uh, just as we look at, uh, you know, the responses from the lawyers noting um, awaiting the constitutional court to pronounce and shed some more light, help us understand that a little bit for, further. Okay, um, Giselle, basically the most uh, critical part of this issue or issues is that um, it's the first time it has happened in our democratic era from 1994 that uh, a judge or judges have been impeached and they've been removed. However, um, the president has used section 177, subsection 2, as you said in the introduction, where based on the fact that the National Assembly has made a resolution he must now remove the charges, and that's what he has done. But I think what uh, Mr. Banabas Pulu, the attorney for um, uh, Judge Thorpe, mm. he has stated that the, it might be that the president has decided what is decided upon, which is removing uh, Judge Thorpe, uh, on, based on an illegal process, because what they've done, they've made an appeal, or sorry, they've asked for the constitutional court to hear their matter. So they've asked for the court to grant them access to hear their matter based on the fact that they feel that uh, the law must be developed for judicial impeachment. There must be a full inquiry and so forth. So they are not happy with the process. But before uh, the voting happened, they've already, you know, took, uh, they already took the matter to the constitutional court. So they are concerned that the voting happened whilst they were still in the process of uh, questioning how the legal process happened or how the voting happened. So I think there might be that issue, but let's see how that matter will be dealt with.